Today I received a Sony TCD5 Pro 2 Professional Portable Stereo Tape Recorder in for service with a problem with the record level control. This is going to be a real simple fix. Check this one out. I had a package arrive in the mail that needs my attention. Let's open it up and see what I received. It, it, never, it never ceases to amaze me how much it costs to ship anything from the United States to Canada. It's, it's just absolutely ridiculous. I had something come in that uh, cost like $50 to ship here and it was going to be like 30, I think it was 36 or 37 to ship back. So this one's probably going to be around 30 to ship this back, maybe 25. But it just never ceases to amaze me how much it costs to post anything out of the States to Canada. At least this one came in and the uh, fellow that sent it to me, it's, 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 a, it's a piece coming in for repair. Um, at least he listened and didn't declare a value on it, otherwise there would have been taxes added, so there was no tax added to this. Oh, interesting. It's uh, He's got Whole Foods bags. See, these are pretty heavy bags. Um, grocery bags. they got a letter in here. Get that out of the way. Got his name and stuff on it for sending it back. I'm keeping the guys in suspense. Ooh, it's, it's a tape recorder. It's a Sony. This is a... Had a couple of these come in before. This is like the third one. Old TCD5. Yeah, this one's got a broken pause button. Since the button itself is broken, I'm not going to be able to do anything on that. But uh, I'm sure I will get the rest of this unit working. Let's uh, take a look and see what's wrong with this one here. It looks like his complaint is the control is loose. Hmm. He knows about the pause button, but I say I'm not going to be able to do anything on that because I don't know where I would go about getting a pause button. He'd have to try and find a used one for that but let's let's address this uh, record level control <laughs> it's because it's broken the uh, the glue has broken it should be a real simple one to fix it's just gonna, I just have to reset the glue for the uh, the control itself, because the, the, the way this control was, was made, this is actually, I think, metal, and it's glued onto a plastic. You can see this one here as well, right? It's got that metal, the metal uh, cover is glued onto a plastic uh, centerpiece. So if I pull the old, I should be able to pull the rest of this knob off and just glue it back together. Oh, this is too simple. That's just come off like that. And I just have to, well, that's the wrong way it goes on this way. I just have to reset this. So I'm going to uh, mix up some good, strong epoxy. And we'll glue this back together. And then we can test this one out. And this will be a minimal repair. So I'm just going to use some JB Weld. I don't need to mix up very much of this stuff. Just a tiny little spot of JB Weld. This is a two-part epoxy. What makes JB Weld so good is that the black part of the epoxy actually has metal filings in it. So it becomes very strong and it lasts for a long time. You mix it together, it'll turn kind of a uniform gray. Just mix this up for a minute or so here. We'll apply some to the inside of this collar and then put the other piece back in. This 
Now, of course, the key to this is we want to make sure that when it's at zero, it's really at zero. So I'm going to put some epoxy in here. We'll set the the, the um, we'll set the insert in, and then I'm going to line it up just so that I can make sure that I've got the volume or the record level control turned all the way down to zero. So we're going to make sure that scrape out any excess that's in here. So now I'm going to take the knob. You know, notice that there's none that's in, there's none that's oozing out here. I'm going to take the knob and I'm going to put it on here, and I'm just going to turn it until it's facing right at zero. Okay, so there's there's a good spot there, and I'm just going to take it back off now just to let it set up. So I've got the knob calibrated so that. It, it lines up with zero with one of the indentations so that it, when it's sitting on zero it's actually sitting right at zero and I'll let the, uh, the the epoxy set up a bit and then we'll put this back on here and he says everything else seems to work on this so it's gonna be a real simple fix but uh, I'm sure I'm sure that somebody's gonna get something out of this video on what happens to these knobs when the glue because this one it'll happen to this one at some point down the road too it hasn't happened yet so I'm not gonna pull it apart just for the sake of taking it apart but at some point this one might break free as well all these type of knobs that had the metal um, like a like a metal finish on it they all had plastic inserts like this and they just glued them together at the factory when you glue it you gotta make sure that you don't get excessive glue around the inside here otherwise it could bind with the other control it won't because uh, there's a little bit of a space there but I've wiped out any excessive glue so that there's no um, nothing for it to get hung up on the other part of the control okay I've let the epoxy set up so now we can put the knob back on and the Two knobs are individually adjustable. There we go. I do have a couple of very old Duracell D size batteries because I don't use D size batteries for much here. You notice that the uh, the dates on here says that they're good until March 2005. Let's check the voltage out and see. I'm sure that there's some juice left in these batteries. 1.33 volts to be exact. Let's uh, see whether they'll actually power this thing up. Battery check. Uh, does it light? Does it do anything? Oh, it actually does something. And well, not much better. <laughs> Battery. The only the only D-sized batteries I've got here are, are all very very old, as I haven't used D batteries for a while. I guess I'm going to have to break down and hook this thing to the power supply if I want to test it. So, with a proper power supply, 3 volts. Draws uh, 0.36 amps at 3 volts. Goes up to half an amp at full volume. button still works on this it's just that the the plastic is broken off so it can still be operated it's just a little more difficult to operate it but it works and you 
press the button here, it turns on the light. Battery check and the light for the VU meter. The VU meter operates, uh, I think, there, now it's back into uh, VU mode. When you press the button down, it goes into battery check and then back to VU. Has a limiter on it. And it'll record to both standard chrome and I think it even selects metal. No, standard and chrome. Auto select. If you have a type 3 tape, like a ferrochrome, you would switch it to that mode. But it does have the auto detection for type 2, as you can see. Type 2 tape, but it does not record on metal. So it's type 1, type 2, and type 3. If you've got a type 1 tape, you put the tape in, and that will automatically select type 1. Same as if it's a type 3 tape. This just selects the equalizer for playback for type 3. So it'll record on ferric uh, oxide tape, which is standard tape, chrome dioxide or cobalt tape, which is type 2, and ferrochrome, which is a type 3 tape, which not too many people have, but I have a few of them. And the unit looks like it's working. Let's see, if you plug it into the sound system, it's going to sound. Gonna sound very good. Um, as far as making a test recording on this one, I'm going to be uh, not able to do that just as I don't have any XLR. I did have XLR stuff. I had a whole bunch of XLR stuff when I was uh, using my professional video camera. That's what it used. But uh, since I no longer use that camera, I no longer have the microphones or anything for it. I've uh, I probably still got some XLR mics kicking around here somewhere, but I haven't used it in a number of years and I'd have to go look for it to find it. I've put it away in storage somewhere but I did have an XLR mic at one point but I imagine that it's going to work fine. And this unit doesn't have any auxiliary inputs. They're all through the XLR type connectors. What you would use is an adapter to record line level on this. You would use XLR to line level adapter. So I'm not going to be able to test it on record unfortunately but it came in for the record level um, control not working, just turning forever. Now that is fixed. So that's it. That's how to repair the record level control. If you've got one of these record level controls that's slipping, it's just held in place by some glue. It's pretty easy to take it apart. You don't even take it apart. It's pretty easy to take the knob off and fix it. No need to try and find a new knob. Just fix the one you already have. Thanks for watching.